Welcome everybody to IFRS 9 and expected credit losses. Let's say you're a bank and you've lent somebody a thousand pounds. You've got a receivable loan now of one thousand pounds. So that goes to your receivables. What IFRS 9 says is don't stop there because sometimes those customers don't pay you, do they? They are a credit risk. And so therefore you're supposed to look ahead and say, what's the probability of them not paying me? and bring that in now. Now on initial, initial recognition, which is stage one, you bring in the expected credit losses for 12 months. Let's say that's 50. So you've got your receivable of 1,000, a loss allowance of 50 set against each other on the balance sheet. So that's uh, for every receivable loan, you bring in the expected credit losses for 12 months initially. Now, as the loan goes on, two things could happen. The person you lent the money to could go bust, what we call credit impaired, or they could just be more likely to go bust, what we call a significant increase in credit, in credit risk. So if either of these two happens, you don't put in the 12 month expected loss, you bring in the lifetime expected loss. So that would be a receivable of a thousand and maybe the lifetime loss is 600 set against each other. So initially you bring in a 12 month expected credit loss. If there's been a significant increase in the credit risk, you bring in the lifetime loss. If it's actually been credit impaired, obviously you bring in the lifetime loss as well. So one final thing to ask yourself is, what do you mean by significant increase in credit risk? Well, could be a downgrade in the customer's credit rating, could be adverse macro conditions, could be they're just 30 days past their due date of payment. Any of those means, ah, now they've got a significant increase in credit risk. I'm going to bring in the lifetime expected credit losses. Hope it helps.